Uh, fill that up with lottery tickets, would you? If I had it. Thank you. Thank you. Knight, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. I, boy, you know, I just think about if uh, my father were here tonight, he'd be saying, well, you're walking in some tall cotton now, son. <laughs> tall cotton. We've had some magnificent, a magnificent award winners tonight. Another round of applause for all of them. I tell you. The heart and soul of our business is the reporters. When they go out there and gather the information. The photographers go out there and get the images. Those who bring the world to us and bring us to the world. It's I'm, me, I'm just a, a scrivener, uh, one of those opinion writers. You know, as uh, my late great colleague Murray Kempton used to say, uh, the opinion writer is like a, a soldier who comes down from the hills after the battle is over <laughs> and shoots the wounded. Needless to say, we have plenty of targets of opportunity these days, <laughs> to say the least. And this is what is important, ladies and gentlemen, because the journalist is getting, uh, well, I think there's this, we're at a period now, as you've heard tonight, where you have to appreciate how, well, I, I had a friend of mine said, I dare you to get through your entire speech without saying, now more than ever. This is what people are saying these days, because there is an importance to media today more than ever. We can all joke about and talk about the abuse that journalists take or dish out, but there's a, definitely a seriousness to things these days. Uh, yes, Sandy, I'm going to throw my speech away and just <laughs> speak from the heart just for a moment. I woke up this morning and I heard that uh, Jacob Zuma had been voted out of South Africa's presidency by his political party, the ANC. Some of you are applauding because you know what the ANC is. If you don't know the ANC, do you know Nelson Mandela? You know that name. My first overseas assignment was to South Africa in the summer of 1976 when the Soweto riots broke out for my convenience. Because uh, no, I'd, I'd been uh, hassling our managing editor about how come we don't have anybody covering South Africa? <laughs> Next day, the managing editor wants to speak to you. Next week, I'm on my, on my way to Joburg, my first overseas assignment. But there was, history was happening. I didn't even know it, but history was happening. I was there. I was able to see my piece of it. Like James Baldwin said, it's what we all want to do is to bear witness. And that, to me, is what has been the best part of my career. At, at that time, the question everybody buys minds was, uh, are we going to have a bloodbath? Is it going to be a revolution? Is, is everything going to turn upside down? It is to the great credit of Nelson Mandela as a man of peace, a man of the law, a man of justice, and immense, unthinkable patience. All the years he spent in prison and came out without any visible resentment about it all. It all, it all had a purpose to it. And what's important in covering Africa, I found, was that Everybody wants to see democracy spread. Uh, the question is, are you going to have one person, one vote, one time? That's why it was important that Jacob Zuma be held accountable. It took a while for the machinery to work, but I was impressed by it because it showed me the institutions are strong in South Africa. And this is no longer an academic thing with me now, because when we talk about our own government, the question about how strong are our institutions comes up. This is the essence of democracy. And what is an institution? My dad used to always say, marriage is an institution, son. <laughs> There's other institutions, though. As I was preparing for tonight, I was uh, thinking back to that wonderful temple in Chicago known as Tribune Tower. Uh, I don't know if you all know, uh, Tribune Tower is something, that was what the, uh, Transformers tore down there in the middle of the <laughs> Michigan Avenue. But it was a magnificent scene, wasn't it? I mean, it was incredible. But you can't do a movie in Chicago without having Tribune Tower in it. It's the law. And my entire career, I would come to Tribune Tower. I've never gotten tired of it. Well, we're moving out of Tribune Tower, just like the Washington Post moves out of there, that castle over there that they, where the Woodward and Bernstein worked years ago. 
All these legendary temples were moving. The, the business is changing. Technology is changing. But journalism, the basic functions of it, are still there. They don't change. And we had an, a great publisher many years known as Robert R. McCormick, who said, a newspaper is an institution developed by modern civilization to present the news of the day, to foster commerce and industry, to inform and lead public opinion, and to furnish that check upon government, which no constitution has ever been able to provide. The lovely words etched into the marble there at the tower, and they've never meant more to me than they do today, because I see how important it is when you have presidency, both houses of Congress, the courts to a large degree, dominated by one line of political thought. Where do you go for independent thought? Well, you still got the free press. You still got those voices out there and those investigative mechanisms that can help to hold the powerful accountable. And that is what humbles us all and at the same time gives us an immensely important responsibility for the future. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for this honor. I am not one who feels like I greatly deserve it, but I accept it on behalf of the great role models I've had in the past and on behalf of the heroes I see developing right here tonight. Thank you very much.